Hello, everybody, and welcome to CurdCast, the podcast for people who like to eat cheese. I am your host, Jen Mason, with my co-host in her studio, Julie Fafan Balzer. Hello, Julie. Hello, Jen. I'm so glad we get to be here. I know. Um, I'm traveling around. I know last week we did it sans Julie because I was, you know, it was European vacation, and this week's theme is not European vacation, so I can be in your house. Perfect. Um, so let's just update those of you who have accidentally hopped into this podcast for some reason you have no idea why you're here um this is curdcast and we are going to eat through our curd box for this month um, we're going to guide you through it and we get to eat while we go so curd box is a cheese and pairing subscription box that we send to your house every day we kind of say it's a cheese and pairing experience we put together this podcast a spotify playlist a really cool info card with all sorts of uh, drink pairings and, and ideas and information about all the makers um and you can get it every month if you go to curdbox.com i should put my little banner on here that i think i edited and we have that right yes and that just gives away our theme which is tailgate party because it's football time we're in America now. I know. And you're a football fan, but you and I are two I different kinds of football fans. You're a college football fan. I, am. I did go not blue. go to a college that was very rah-rah about football. So <laughs> I'm a professional NFL football fan. Yes. You know, I've been to Gillette Stadium for the first time besides to go get COVID shots. Mm. Um, and that was to see Bruce Springsteen and not a football game. <laughs> but um, I felt like I felt like I was sort of prepping for mm -hmm. football season. I, I, I give you a pass on okay. that. Okay. So um, have you ever tailgated? I mean, you didn't have a big rah-rah college team, right. but you did have right. a college team. We did have a college team, I but it was also like a five-minute walk from my dorm to the yeah. stadium. So it's not like, it was just not like that. I, I envy the tailgating mm. that I see and all that kind of stuff, but I've never, ever done like the cooking a hamburger in mm. the parking lot. We need tailgate. to just go to like, you know, Costco and have a tailgate party <laughs> or something fun like that. We're going to be hosting an art um, and cheese uh, tailgate, tailgate party. party. I think that's our next on our to-do list. Okay. So Julie, mm -hmm. um, at a tailgate, they always eat exactly what we have on this plate. Since you've never Ooh, been, you can't tell I'm that I'm ready lying. to go. So no, so you think about tailgates mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it's not fine French food. Um, it's got to be easy to eat. It's got to be um, fun to eat out of the back of a truck. It's got to be um, not blowing away, easy to cut, easy to prep. So there's lots of things, lots of bags of chips and deviled mm -hmm. eggs. I've had deviled eggs and I've had people light up um, a grill sometimes. But um, what we tried to do is create uh, the taste of a tailgate in a cheese plate. Great. So we're going to start today with um, our orange cheese. So this is Prairie Sunset. It's made by a company named Roth. So they started um, in 1863 mm. in Switzerland. But mm, mm. in 1990, the company decided to um, establish cheese making in um, Monroe, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. They use, this is orange. Orange does not necessarily mean cheap, bad cheese. In this case, they use a natto. Um, this is sort of a cross between a cheddar and a gouda. Um, it's I got say, a nice, it almost tastes like Swiss cheese to me. And it's got, you know, I think it, that's the, they sort of developed Emmental, which is a Swiss cheese, which has come to be known as Swiss cheese, a cheese with holes in it. Um, so that's definitely in their, in their um, DNA, but it's a nice, this cheese is really good on a grilled cheese. Mm -hmm. And I've even had a grilled cheese that had sort of sauteed apples. Mm. on it sliced really thin and this cheese shredded on the outside of the bread so it got all crispy mm -hmm. and cheesy fantastic um but great great cheese this is a cow's milk cheese it's only four months old it doesn't it's not very old it's not cr crumbly it doesn't mm -hmm. have any other cheese crystals but it's a good cheese it's going to stand up to a nice cold beer or a soda out of the you know coleman cooler not sponsored by coleman <laughs> Um, if you really fancy a Yeti cooler, a Yeti would be great. I'd That's love to sponsor. Yes. That's my dream. Yes. Yeti, feel free to reach out to us for our <laughs> art and cheese tailgate party. Um, uh, our next cheese we're going to eat, we're going to, we're going to move to a goat's milk cheese. Now this, I'm going to smell it. So good. Mm -hmm. So this mm. is a smoked goat Gouda. Mm. 
Mm, thank goodness my husband does not eat goat cheese because <laughs> I'm eating all of this for me. And I think so he good. could eat the whole thing just to make sure he knows it's goat. Mm, yeah, we're definitely writing the word goat on it. It's so good. <laughs> it's mm. so, so good. Um, mm. Just a different taste there again, but it still has um, the smoked part it's of it. It's so rich. It's so deep with flavor. Like I'm it, trying to think how to describe it. It's mm -hmm. like, it's just like the flavor keeps going. It lingers in your mouth. The texture mm. is beautiful. Like, mm, mm, oh, it's so good. I know. Mm. It's really, really Yum. fantastic. I only cut us little pieces, but there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot more. <laughs> there's a lot more downstairs. Okay. So this is made. Um, this is a uh, smoked goat cheese made by Chevrolet, but it's Chevrolet. Chevrolet, the car company. No, Chevra for mm -hmm. goat and late L A I T for milk. Oh, Goat's milk. Interesting. Um, feels like a real who's on first. Moment. Yeah, <laughs> it really, it really is. Um, made in Holland, and um, this one is a very young cheese. Which you can mm. kind of tell by how it just melts in your yeah, it's mouth. It's funny because it's smoky, but it feels so fresh. And it's mm -hmm. deep, but it feels so fresh. And like, I think that's an interesting thing. Because so often for cheese to feel deep, it has to be aged. Mm -hmm. Or it has to be like kind of really stinky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And often smoke things for me feel more like they were sprayed with smoke than they actually have like smoke in them. Yeah. Is the best way to describe it. Mm -hmm. This cheese is like easily one of my favorite that we've had in the curd box. And I've only had one bite. I'm restraining <laughs> myself at this Excellent, moment. excellent. Um, I like to think of cheese as like, um, what's, what's my favorite cheese is the one I had just had in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Unless it was really bad, in which case I get it out of my mouth and I chain, I, I wash the taste out with another piece of cheese. Perfect. Okay. So our, so our last of our three cheeses, mm -hmm. wow, we go so much faster when we're in the same room and I have food to eat and I want to eat the next piece. Normally, for those of you who don't normally watch, I am doing these from abroad. And she takes forever for bites between cheese for me. Yeah. So we're going to go faster. We're going to spend some time mixing and matching later. So the next one is fun. So the next one is the portmento. Portmento. Ooh, it's so soft. This is Camazola. This is a mix of camembert and gorgonzola. The veining is so gorgeous. Yeah. So this one is, um, mm. it has both um, the penicillin camembert, um, which is oh what we put gosh. in camembert. And the uh, penicillin oh. roqueforti, which is what makes uh, blue cheese. So you can't see somebody's eyes mm. rolling into the back of their head mm. on a podcast, mm. but oh my God, it's so good. And it has, the thing I like is it has that creamy section mm -hmm. of it. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's not just all that sort of pungent you know, uh, blue cheesy kind of flavor. Like yeah. it has that really creamy. It tastes soft... like the best kind of cultured butter. Mm. Mm. Right. Yum. And Still it... gay parties are not like this, Jen. <laughs> I haven't been to one, but I feel like it's not. <laughs> the, we're reinventing the tailgate okay. party. Okay. But I like to think of, you know, also having Buffalo wings and stuff. So blue cheese wouldn't be unlikely to have at a Just um, so party. You know, yes. Buffalo wings are one of my favorite things on <gasps> the whole planet. It's like, it's not even food, is it? But like, I would walk a mile for buffalo wings. All right. I'm just saying. So we will be having buffalo wings at our first annual <laughs> cheese and art um, tailgate. Tailgate. 100%. Yes. Um, for, again, other things we need to fill people in for. If you haven't been here before, we are in filming from Julie's art studio. Julie is a professional mm -hmm. artist, teacher, instructor, coach, uh, creator, book author, uh, mm, person about town. Person about town. Yeah. Um, that's why we keep saying art. Um, and that's, we met in another life in the art world. Okay. So three cheeses. The mm -hmm. camembert is also a young cheese. So these are all pretty, these are all like four months or younger. Mm, baby cheeses. And baby cheeses, but like flavorful baby cheeses. Oh yeah. I mean, my experience of having a baby is that it is, <laughs> there's a lot of smells and a lot of things going on. That's a flavorful baby. Baby ain't bland. <laughs> Excellent. So. Now we are thinking, like, what would you have at a party? Well, maybe sandwiches, maybe salami sandwiches, maybe hoagies, maybe beer, maybe pretzels, maybe some mustard on the sandwiches, which is leading us to our three pairings, which are salami, beer pretzels, and mustard. So mm. let's um, start with our beer pretzels. You're going to love these. These are by Pop Daddy. We've I don't loved, like beer, so. We we'll loved say. everything that Pop Daddy has made. This um, company was started by Mark and Aaron. Mm. 
Doesn't taste like beer. Right? It's delicious. But it's so flavorful. Very flavorful. So um, this is made with um, mm. a beer from a Michigan brewery called Perrin. Mm. And uh, and the company is from Michigan. It's delicious. And gosh, we've had... We've had uh, mustard pretzels from them. We've had we've had a bunch of different um, items from them. They make the best tasting version. If there's other ones on the market, everything of theirs is so delicious. They started by um, they were their family was big into like microwave popcorn, and then they found out microwave popcorn's got a lot of weird stuff in it. So then they started baking popcorn, and then they started making flavored popcorn, and then they started sharing it. And then I think his wife and kids said, "Stop giving it away for free." make a product and i don't have the bag here but their product is beautiful mm -hmm. um it's delicious it's delicious it's finger licking good it really is mm. Mm. so good um so it's like the ultimate seasoned pretzel mm -hmm. wow tasty so good it's going to be good to dip into that camisola um next up we have sliced salami milano um and this is by beretta mm -hmm. so um it's made in new jersey but they, uh, the company started in 1812. So, you know, they're brand new. <laughs> um, in um, Barzano, Italy. Yeah. Mm. It's a little, got a little peppery. Um, it's definitely made in sort of the northern Italian style. That matters to me only now because I live in Italy. And mm. this, I swear salami is different every, like, It's really flavorful. Like, it doesn't just taste like salt. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. mm. Really nice. And it's got the nice little pieces Mm -hmm. of um black pepper in it not the big like the ones that like make you mm -hmm. choke like also the edge of it isn't mm -hmm. that like super hard mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's really it's very good. good yummy for those of you who are watching this and not just listening it's got a decent size do the like little so the decent size um uh breakdown of of meat and fat in there which means it's going to be more tender than something that's got smaller ones it's very good. Mm, delicious. It's it has that nice umami in your mouth because of all the fat where you really like feel it around. Yeah. But it doesn't do that meat gum thing mm -hmm. where you're chewing it for a hundred years yeah. and you're like, mm, this is really good gum that tastes like meat that I have to swallow now. Yeah. This is really tasty. So basically you can have a deconstructed salami sandwich. Mm, I'm ready. And um and just don't tell anybody that there's goat cheese. Like take all the goat cheese off the platter so <laughs> you don't have to share. All right. Our last pairing, and then we're going to mix and match um, and find out. This is a good one. To, uh, sometimes ours are like everything just goes together. So just nibble this and nibble that, nibble this. But like those pretzels are going to be dipped into a couple things, and the salami is mm -hmm. going to be eaten with mm -hmm. a couple things. This is a good. This is a good one to mix things together. Um, this is a uh, melange. See, we. Oui. <laughs> Sorry, I was doing it in Italian again. Um, I anywhere I go. Um, I was speaking to my mm -hmm. friend's grandmother the other day and I was saying yes to her. Mm -hmm. She does not speak English or Italian. Mm -hmm. And I kept saying, see, sí, see, sí, because we stopped by a Dunkin Donuts drive through the other day and there was some problem. And the woman behind the cash register was speaking Spanish to us. And I know enough Spanish to just sort of like understand it and be like, okay, okay, okay. And the interesting thing was she spoke Spanish to me the whole time. And then the second I said something in English, I said, thank you. She said back to me or no, wait. Uh, Steve said, gracias, right? Yeah. And then so all of a sudden she spoke English and she said, you're welcome. And I was like, oh, our accents are so bad that she immediately <laughs> recognized her mistake. And she was like, no, you know Spanish for you anymore. You get English. So then I felt bad. I was Learning like, another language is great bad. though. We went to Spain on the way home. Mm -hmm. We went to a tapas restaurant because then you get to try lots of little things, which is very similar to a cheese board. And um, I accidentally used my Italian mm -hmm. because I don't really have any Spanish anywhere in here. And the guy said, Oh, you speak Italian. And he brought us the Italian menus and didn't Aww. even bring us the English menus. We're still getting English menus in Italy, but mm -hmm. in Spain we get the Italian menus, which was buonissimo. Okay. Last one. We're going to hop to France. Uh, really we're going to hop to New York, but it's a French mustard. We're going to have moutard de l'ancien. By Three Little Pigs. Oh, Ooh, smells so right? good. And I love oh, Three Little Pigs. I love their so, pate. I don't know if I've ever had their mustard. Mm, their mustard. Mmm. Mmm. I like it because it is. Oh, it's hot. I like that. It is. It's a, a full grain. Sorry. It's delicious. Mustard. Oh, it's so good. It's I, really nice. It's got a little bit of a bite yeah. that you need. And I like the texture in a whole grain mustard. Mm-hmm. It's just a little more interesting, yeah, but yeah. I think those, 
I think those oh, I'm excited pastas to are going to go in there. Goat cheese so, in there. <laughs> so we've had um, three little pigs before. Mm -hmm. um, these guys uh, started in 1975. They were a small charcuterie company. They now they make pate, they make uh, mustard, they make uh, lots and lots of salami and uh, just everything they do, and they do it in the, in the French style. I, I love it. This is an old style mustard they make. They make another one as well. Uh, you can find their products in probably any specialty food store you go into, and I highly recommend them. But this mustard is great. You know, this would be great for any like chicken recipe that like mm -hmm. had you like wrap it in mustard or even say I had a salmon the other day that was had a mustard hmm. um, in the top. And I think this because it holds up. So when you yeah. cook it and it mellows out, there's still flavor there. You didn't just like wash it all away. Anyways, really great. It's time to try. What are you going to try together? I'm goat cheesing and mustarding first. Nice. Excellent. And normally a goat cheese, I wouldn't say with the mustard, but with the smoke part of it, it's almost like it has bacon in it. it it's just got hardiness mm. to it. It's a nice combination. The two flavors, I was I was concerned that they would clash, mm -hmm. but they don't. So that's good to know. Now we're going to go cheese and pretzel. Excellent. Mm. I'm going to do a pretzel mm. with some of the campanzola. Ooh, that's nice. Mm. That's really nice. Mm. I'm gonna, this it is feels like I dipped the pretzel in butter. Ooh. This is definitely going to be a box where everything kind of goes. So I'm going to put some mustard on the nice salami. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put a piece of cheese inside. And the and mustard has like a, a Dijon kick. Mm. But then it's mixed with like all a uh, uh, whole grain mustard <laughs> cheese taco. Oh, and that pretzel is mm. going to give you a crunch. This is how you enjoy mm. cheese. I can attest. This is a fine combination. Mm. Um, mm. The sum is truly greater than the parts. Yeah, I love it. It would be interesting if you could um, figure out a way to serve those as an order, as a one bite hors d'oeuvre. Toothpick would do it, wouldn't it? Yeah. If you could sharpen the pretzels. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, but really, really good. Um, yeah. I will now we'll proceed to next. let you talk about things, and I will just shove them okay. in my face. All right. Try the pretzel with the cambozola. I love cambozola. I love the name of that. And, you know, the, the other thing mm. is, is that um, a sort of um, good gorgonzola so is good. a good gateway blue cheese. Mm -hmm. um, it can either be picante which is going to have some spicy kick in the back of your back of your here. You're back here. I'm pointing to my the back of your jaw, show, jaw whatever. Your um, ears. Or you can have a gorgonzola um, dolce. It's a little sweeter. And that's usually the one you'll get. Like if you get something that's on like a little bit on a steak at a restaurant or something, it's usually the dolce they use. Um, and so its sweetness helps make it a little more approachable. But then you mix it with the camembert and it's like butter. Mm. Super butter. My mouth is on happy fire right now. <laughs> so uh, I just want to talk a little bit more um, before we go about, you know, using this theme. So using tailgate, um, you know, other ways you could approach this if you're having a tailgate is think about possibly like a sandwich you like to have. Like mm -hmm. you could do, um, I'm thinking like a Cuba, a Cubano sandwich. So that would have what ham and pork pickles and mustard. Mm -hmm. So you could do that. And usually it has a Swiss cheese, I think, on it. I'd have to double check. But think about deconstructing a sandwich. Mm -hmm. um, you could deconstruct an Italian um, sandwich. I'd just say, like, even, like, a meat lover's, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, pa sandwich or something like that. Like, you could just have a, kind of the beginning of a charcuterie plate, mm -hmm. then throw in the kind of things that you might throw into the sandwich to make it better, some pepperoncinos yep. or something, like, hot, and then, you know, a couple, like, tomatoes and some cheeses that sort of go with the different meats for exactly. you. And then you can let people sort of <clears throat> pick and choose and match and make their own. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say like one of the things I love about a cheese plate is that it fulfills this requirement for group entertaining, <laughs> which is yeah. allowing people to choose what they want. Yeah. Because nowadays, you know, I'm hyper aware of people's allergies and also sensitivities exactly. or like things they yep. like and don't like. So for instance, like I have a group of people coming for an art retreat and we feed them. And almost every single meal, it's like, make your own chicken bowl, make your own baked potato. It's like we put out the ingredients and then yep. it's like, you get to pick what you want. And I feel like a cheese plate has always been the ultimate version of that. Very much so. 
where you get to kind of pick it. But what you get to do at the ho as the host, which I think is the most fun, is you get to say, like, in a dream world, like, right, this is the combination yeah. that you're going to love. Mm -hmm. But if you don't like that, like, I'm exactly. not offended. So yeah. it's almost like you're able to cook without actually having to cook anything. Exactly, or, exactly. You know? And if you aren't, like, if you, you know, if, if your tailgate is less fancy and you're like, eh, that's a little elevated for what we're going to be doing in the backyard – um, think about instead, you're still doing the cheese and stuff, but thinking about basically making a cheese board slash sandwich board. So, mm -hmm. um, but cause there's so many things to try, maybe get little slider rolls or like the, um, little Hawaiian rolls and cut them so they can be slider rolls. Sometimes you can find the mini hot dogs, split top buns. Um, so they can make little cheese, little tiny Italian subs, you know, they can play with it. I mean, let them play with their food because they can't play on the, on the field. So, yeah. you know, I mean, you can go for a runner, but the cops are going to get, yeah, you got to run really fast. I could basically fall over the edge of the railing and then I would be caught. I might be caught falling over the edge of the railing. My pants would probably get caught. <laughs> it would, I'm, I'm not, no, I'm not going to be running on it the field. It would be a really good TikTok moment. It would be, so, would you TikTok it for me? Would you record 100%. it? Okay. Excellent. Make sure you tag me. <laughs> I don't know what the hashtag is for that one, but, um, but think about how you can take something you really like and deconstruct it. I mean, you could even deconstruct a, a pizza if you wanted, you know, if you like green peppers and you like, um, you know, mozzarella and little pepperonis, you can have turkey pepperonis. You could have a couple of different kinds of pepperonis. You could have some beautiful like sun-dried tomato paste and exactly. like that to go in for the tomato. Totally. Like um so I'm just many working things. my way through here so it's delicious <laughs> excellent well i hope you will uh think about subscribing to curd box and it makes a great gift the holidays are coming up you can subscribe monthly mm -hmm. you can subscribe um in three and six months either as a gift or reoccurring make sure you check the right box um, and we even do a 12 month uh gift so that one doesn't reoccur and to our three six and twelve you can add wine so um we work with um a wine partner and they will send you the wine um and you'll get that all at the beginning so you can drink it all at the beginning if you want or you can drink one bottle a month with your boxes um what a good job i did clearing my oh my goodness i'm so proud of you see this is what happens when we when we get to record together <laughs> next month uh we'll be recording from across the way um but um, we're so excited to have you here if you want to follow or find more out about prairie sunset which was our first cheese you can go to at roth cheese um, and if you want to find out more about, um, our pretzels, the really delicious pretzels, they're at pop daddy snacks. Uh, our salami is from at fratelli beretta underscore USA. And, uh, and our, uh, mustard from three little pigs is at the number three pigs pate. And, uh, you can follow Julie at what Julie ate. And, uh, and you can follow Curdbox at Curdbox um, and you can get your box at curdbox.com. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Go team!